Sports Card Radio had over 2,000 live viewers on their live stream last night. We'll talk about that as well as some new stuff from Probstein. Probstein, stick around. to all my sports card collectors, investors, all of my collectibles, friends. It is another day. It is another card video. If you're new here, you're looking for all of the sports card hobby stuff, whether it be news, new sets, cards, reveals, all the sort of stuff that you're looking for. We're here pretty much daily. Please hit the big red button down below the subscribe button. If you like what you hear, the like button, just to help us spider these videos out to the masses. Also, don't forget to connect with me on IG at Sports Card Dad. And I'm also on the Twitter machine, the Sports Card Dad. All right, I have to give a huge shout out to the guys at Sports Card Radio. They set this thing up masterfully yesterday. So to give a little bit of background as to what's going on, there was a box at the National that was open, an 86 Fleer box that was opened uh, by Card Collector 2, Jeff Wilson, other folks. And there was something not quite right about this box. There was cards that were a little bit out of order compared to the way that they're supposed to be synced up. There was like five Johnson cards in a row. It was it was just a little bit off. Um, it was a BBC E wrapped box and Steve Hart came out and said that there were two packs that looked a little bit weird that he had replaced in that box. So, you know, it was considered a built box, a Frankenstein box, if you will. I made a video or two on it. Sports Card Radio did a few different videos on it, really breaking it down. I was at the National, but they were the ones that actually opened my eyes to what had happened there with that box, but also the sequencing because I had heard of this. I've seen other box breaks where people kind of of they see a card coming and they're like, oh, I think that the Jordan could be in this pack based on patterns, but it didn't really register with me until they had broken that down in their first video. So I thought that that was very good. I know that look, for longtime hobbyists, this might have been known stuff. This might have been just well-known knowledge, but I think for a lot of new people or new-ish people, I got back in the hobby in 2018, so I'm not brand new, but I haven't been around for 10, 15, 20 years. And I've also heard longtime people that have been around for 20 plus years didn't know about this. So I thought that was a really helpful video. And so there's a lot of question marks about it. There's still some kind of looking into. But anyway, Whatnot came out and said, you know what? Screw it. We'll do a second box. We'll do a second box. We'll break it live. Ken Golden's going to break it. And it all goes to, you know, charity, et cetera. And so they ended up doing this thing live on Whatnot last night. Well, the sports card radio guys masterfully, I, I should add, again, I'll say it twice. They decided that they're going to do a watch party. They're going to watch it live and basically just, you know, talk through it with Chad and everything else. From what I know, this, I believe this was their first live stream that they've ever done. And it was the two brothers. Cause I know a lot of people are like, Hey, is there one? Is there two? What's the deal? I didn't realize this. They said on the live stream, they are twins. I didn't know that. Um, but anyway, both of them were there. So there are two people and they went through, they did the watch party. But what's fascinating to me is they got on, I think maybe an hour before, 45 minutes before the break. And they, it started off with like seven, 800. I was like, man, that's a lot. And then it went over 1,000, 1,200, 1,400, 1,500. And at one point I saw it over 2,000 live viewers watching. I mean, hell, 2,000 live viewers is probably more than Brian Stelzer got before his CNN show ended. For someone that makes content, I've been making content for about two and a half years. I've made 920 videos or so, almost daily, really. I mean, not every single day, but if you average it out over the days, it's one a day, if not more than one a day. Um, and I understand the grind of it. This is just damn impressive. It's impressive to get 2,000 people on a live stream. Brad and I do the weekly off-centered show uh, with the Comeback Card Investor on his channel now. It's solely on his channel. And the most we've ever had on a live stream for the, on that show is 350 people. And I thought, man, that is a ton. And 2,000 people in the sports card niche market is like 50,000 in another category. This is just such a niche hobby. I'm probably the only one that collects cards in my neighborhood. You're probably the only one that collects cards in your neighborhood. It is just extremely niche. It doesn't seem that way for us where we're watching content and we're doing it day to day because we're like, oh man, there's all these different channels and everything else. It doesn't even compare to some of the other stuff, even, even just other types of trading cards, Pokemon cards. I mean, there's so many different Pokemon content creators, all different levels. 
And Logan Paul with 25 million plus subscribers, he's one of the leaders of kind of that Pokemon card content stuff. So to have 2,000 people on a live stream is wild. It just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen outside of, you know, Jeff Wilson doing uh, his virtual show. I've seen, you know, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 people on his virtual, maybe 2,000. I can't remember, but I know he had at least 1,000, 1,500 people that are on live when he does that holiday virtual. And he's got almost 200,000 subscribers. So this was incredible. I thought it had to be, it had to be called out because it's not, it's not typical. And on top of that, the super chats that were coming through, these guys easily, they had to have made a couple of thousand dollars in super chats. I know that even for a couple of guys that have Rolexes and Teslas, $2,000 isn't a bad night. And maybe it was more or less. I don't know. But it just seemed like watching the, watching the stream, it was like $2, $25, $50, $75. Like money was just flying out everywhere. And so I think this really speaks to entertainment value matters in content in general, but especially in sports card content as well. It's like, how do you separate yourself? These guys have a lot of good chemistry. They, they bring entertainment value. They also have time in the hobby. I think that they started their website for 14, 15 years ago, sports card radio site, going through checklists of different cards, going writing vlogs on various topics within the hobby. They're not newbies. They've been around. I think they had said that they owned a card show, a card shop at one point. You know, so they're not new to this. They've been doing it for a long time. So they've got kind of that combination of education slash entertainment. And it just goes to show that entertainment value is extremely important and they are very entertaining. So congrats again to the Sports Card Radio brothers. I hope to see more of the live streams moving forward. All right, moving on to Probstein, Probstein, and kind of along these same lines. I thought this was interesting because I was just I was scrolling on IG and I stopped and I noticed that that Rick has been doing more kind of informational news type stuff on IG. One of them that I caught was is that he was stating that he pulled two counterfeit cards, well, what would are believed to be counterfeits from auction, and it was a Michael Jordan rookie card. I believe it was in an HG. 7.0. And then there was also a, a Michael Jordan insert card that was sitting in a BGS case. One thing I thought was interesting, and I couldn't tell this, and I, granted, this was a quick flash on the screen, but he, I think that he had said that it was fake card in a fake case is what it believed to be. Now, the fake card part, okay, but the fake case, again, like that Beckett case did not, like to me, it didn't look wildly fake. Like it wasn't, it wasn't completely obvious. But I think that, you know, he, and he had said in that, in that little clip, that he's going to start calling these things out as they happen. And again, I think that's a testament to we have a hobby that is very niche. There are not a lot of companies, hobby companies, and there's a ton of money that's poured in. So what happens is, is there needs to be a lot of transparency. There is a bright spotlight shining on all of these companies because there should be, there should be, there is so much money flowing and there's a lot of customers out there, a lot of collectors slash customers slash investors that are putting harder and money into all of these different products and services, et cetera. And so if there's something that seems a little bit off, it needs to be talked about because there are not many companies. There's not a lot of competition. And frankly, the hobby does have kind of a long running uh, scammy type stuff that's happened. There are certain things that have happened. It's not to say that there's, you know, thousands of scammers out there. There might only be, you know, a few bad apples, but the reality is, is that a few bad apples can do a lot of damage in this type of, this type of hobby. You know, we talk about sports memorabilia, fake autographs back in the 80s. This was like a handful of guys literally that that put out like thousands and thousands of, of autographed items that, that they had signed, you know, that they had forged essentially. And that is bad. That's a horribly bad thing because once it gets out there in circulation, how do you figure out what's what? How do you find it? How do you, you know, how do you know? You know, and if one of them gets past, you know, an authenticator at, at one of these larger companies, whether it be Beckett or PSA or SGC or CSG or wherever it is, then it's it's been legitimized, if you will. So, you know, these are things that need to be talked about. I do think that it is getting cleaned up because of stuff like this, you know, because of social media, because people are talking about it and it's just getting it out. And that's that's a good thing. All the, the counterfeit stuff, they gotta they gotta burn it. They gotta get it off the market, you know, so that someone doesn't get stuck, so we don't get into this loop of you know buying fake stuff. Anyway, guys. Thank you very much for joining me here today. Let me know your thoughts per usual in the comments below. I appreciate you as always. Stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will talk to you again later.